the Civil Defence in Ireland consists of about 3,500 volunteers. There are many different services, the Casualty Service, the Search and Rescue Service, the Auxiliary Fire Service, the Boat Service, Communications and Welfare. This is the story about one of those services, the Search and Rescue Dog Service. My name is Keelan and I'm a search dog handler attached to Mead Civil Defence. Bowie is my partner. He's an air scenting search dog. Bowie and I are brought in to assist the Gardaí in times when they're looking for missing persons. It doesn't matter if it is in an urban, a rural or a mountainous environment. We train in all these environments to be the best assistance to the Gardaí in finding the missing person. Today, myself and Bowie are in the V, simulating an open country search for a vulnerable missing person. Everything we do from the moment we get out of the car indicates to the dog that the dog is going for play. The click of the harness, the attachment of the lead, and then the release with the command go find. All this indicates to the dog that once he's found what he's looking for, that there will be great excitement and fun. And that is the drive that we use to train our dogs. My name is Mark Condon. I'm a dog handler with Tipperary Civil Defence and our search dog is called Scooby. Scooby is a golden Labrador and he's six years old. Scooby is trained to a very high standard, which is the equivalent to the ACPO standard in the UK. It's one of the highest standards available to us within civil events. It, the training is can be very difficult at times. It's um, very time consuming and it takes up uh, an awful lot of our spare time. Uh, we train anything from twice a week during the winter up to three or four times a week in the summer months. But it's not just all the training. We have dogs that we walked every day. Uh, so you're, you walk the dogs for in between um, an hour and a half to two hours every day. So it's not just like a, a normal piece of equipment that you can lock away and forget about when you're not using it. The dogs have to be looked after seven days a week. So it's it's a big commitment on the behalf of the, the handlers. What we've done here is we've put out maybe a dozen um, cavity blocks in each cavity, which is two per block, um, we've put a plastic cup in each of them, just an empty plastic cup. In one cup, we have put a bit of scent for Max. We've put a breeze block then over each of the cavities and just left a crack um, for the scent to, to get out. The idea of this train is that we want to get Max to focus his indication right on the spot where the, where the scent's coming out, i.e. get his nose right on the crack. So you see that what we do is we're working him around the room and um, he's stalled at it this time but we're going to keep going because he, he didn't go down, he shouldn't leave it alone and give, to give the indication. So on the second time around the room you can see he drops down, starts barking straight away, puts his nose right over the crack and that's where I'm delivering the ball to him. Currently the Civil Defence in Ireland has four operational search dogs. There are two open area air scenting search dogs, Bowie and Scooby, and there are two cadaver and drowned victim recovery dogs, Max and Nero. We also have a dog in training in County Kilkenny. These dogs are on call 24-7 to any Civil Defence officer who may wish the dogs to assist in their search. In an urban area, 
The first thing you do is sort of have a look at, at the area where you're sending the dog to make sure it's safe for the dog to go in. Uh, once you're happy enough with that, in an urban area like that, I'd keep them more in view than I would in an, in a, um, an open air scenario. Um, because if there's more pitfalls, he could or he could fall down a hole if you're looking in rubble or whatever. If he comes to some, if down a hole, he won't go into the hole himself, he'll stand at the top. He'll get as close to the top of the hole or where the scent is coming from and he'll indicate from there. All of our dogs train in open and urban areas and they range out from the handler in order to use all their senses, their sense of smell and their sight, to find the missing person. When they enter into the scent cone of the missing person, their body language changes substantially and the handlers are trained to recognise this change in body language and follow the dog into an area where something has interested the dog. All of our dogs will bark, indicate on the missing person or the casualty. And if the handler is too far behind, the dog will return to the handler and bark an indication at the handler. who will then invite the dog to bring them back in to where the casualty is. All the search dogs in civil defence wear a specific harness. This harness not only identifies the dog as a search and service dog to civil defence, but it is also a trigger for the dog to tell him that he's now at play, or in our case at work, searching for his toy, which to us is the missing person. There are two different types of dogs in service with the civil defence. The first is the open country missing person search dog, and the second is the cadaver, or drowned victim recovery dog. The dogs work together at different times, or at different times during a search, in order to repatriate a missing person to their family and friends. It is very important for the dog to be called out as soon as possible and not to delay. The quicker the missing person search dog is called in, the quicker a resolution can be brought. Quite often, the dogs don't find, but they provide information to the search manager that an area is likely clear of the missing person. Our search dogs, they don't use scent articles or anything belonging to the missing person, but they deploy straight away and identify every person who might be in a search area. This can sometimes be problematic, but quite often the good search managers will place us in a position to search an area before large-scale search teams come in and gives us the chance to clear areas as quick as possible. The missing person search dog can cover an area in the same length of time as 20 foot volunteers. In recent months, we have been training to operate both our cadaver and our missing person search dogs together. This gives us a force multiplication of the dog service, in that we only will train our dogs in one specific discipline, but with two dogs running the same ground. It allows the search manager to have that ground covered from two specific aspects. Either we may make a rescue from a missing person, or we make a recovery from somebody who was recently deceased. As missing persons search dog handlers, we all owe an awful lot to the volunteers who give up their time to come and hide for our dogs and act as casualties. These people often spend long hours lying out in open ground in all different types of weather just to allow the dog to find them. But we have some fantastic bodies and the people who body for us usually take the challenge to extremes and often can be found hiding in trees, behind bushes, on top of walls, in skips and sometimes we've even found people hiding in boats. 
My name is Dolores Fahey, Civil Defence Officer for Tipperary Civil Defence. I'm one of the four civil defence officers nationally with responsibility for the canine units. Our canine units are very specialised and highly trained units which are an extremely tremendous asset to civil defence in terms of the operations of search and search management. Civil defence units are mobilised to searches for missing persons by the Gardaí who are the lead agency when dealing with missing persons. Once civil defence is mobilised by the Gardaí I in turn contact the dog handlers who mobilise to the scene of a search for missing persons. Here at Civil Defence Headquarters in Clonmel, we're always ready, prepared and well trained to respond to any emergency from the public, whether it's a search for a missing person, respond to severe weather or whatever it may be in your community, we're here to respond. 